Hello and welcome to this video where we will explore Google's new AI mode to find out what the new ranking paradigm is going to be going forward once Google switches to AI mode. Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Muller and I invite you to join me on this journey of exploring what the future of SEO is going to look like. So we will be comparing the current situation of Google's AI overviews with Google's AI mode. You can follow along with this yourself. If you are located in the USA and you have a personal Gmail account, then you simply type in google.com forward slash AI mode. Let me bring this up a bit bigger, just like this. And you should then be redirected to a screen that looks something like that. So let's give this a try. Awesome. So this is what Google's AI mode looks like. And we're going to be doing a couple of searches and comparing what the search results look like at the moment and diving deeper into where is Google getting that information from and how can we rank inside of AI mode going forward. So we're looking at a query here, first of all, um, which is the best dentist in San Francisco for anxious patients. So let's com firstly compare these search results. So when we compare both side by side, on the left hand side, we have the Google AI mode. We can see that we have two clinics that are really standing out and are worth investigating. We've got Young Dental and Marina Grins, which are appearing in both sections. Here on the right hand side, um, scrolling up, we have Young Dental on the right call out panel over here. And then they're mentioned as well here in the number two spot. And let's see where Marina is on the old version. Okay, you can see Marina is ranked number one when it comes to Google Maps. And that's the only time she appears here in the regular SERPs. Um, she does not appear here on the AI overview SERPs that are currently happening. So that's an interesting observation that even though somebody who's ranking number one in Google Maps has not made it into the top 10 or even 12, 13, 14 recommendations here towards um, Google AI overviews. So let's have a look then why the uh, Young SF is doing so well. They are appearing in both pages. So they have a service page, easy to understand URL structure. The URL is dental phobia, which could be part of the fan out technique. So real quick, the fan out technique is where Google takes your main keyword, the let's say dental anxiety, let's call this DA, and turns it into other variations such as potentially dental phobia, could be also about general phobia. Um, then maybe it might ask for um, doctors who are good with anxious patients um, and kind of look for reviews around anxious patients and people who are mentioning anxiety inside of reviews. So just um, a bunch of different variations. We used to call these keyword synonyms or people also ask essentially. The idea is that there's a starting keyword such as um, best dentist for dental anxiety. And then there's a bunch of variations that the large language models generate, and they might do these alternative searches to then arrive on your website. And they might also look for those keywords on your website. So that is actually quite interesting what they're mentioning in the first few words, because we can see there's all these variations, um, which they've no doubt put on purpose at the front of the text dental fear, anxiety, phobia, being anxious, that's all, everything I just mentioned, um, being afraid of the dentist, put at the very front of the text. So that seems to have helped them to front load um, these keyword variations. And then they connect them also to San Francisco, uh, which is the keyword that we've looked for. And they connect it to their brand. Dentists at our clinic work with dental phobic patients. Dental phobic being 
another variation. So they have not used the old methodology of SEO where you would repeat the keyword um, best dentist for anxious patients in San Francisco 10 times. They have essentially used 10 different keyword variations. So that's an interesting observation right here and something that you can certainly copy. And if you're looking to move or copy your website over, such as a website migration, I can highly recommend Cloudways, which is the sponsor of today's video. I will show you here how you can even use Cloudways DNS management as a replacement for platforms such as Cloudflare. So what you can do here in Cloudways, you click on the add-on section and you say view all add-ons. And for example, if you need email sending, then Elastic Email is the right option for you. However, now let's chat about DNS and how to add your domain name in here. You basically come here and you put in your domain name, you click Save Changes, and it will then tell you the name servers that you need to set on your domain registrar. So in this case, these are the name servers that you should be setting on your domain registrar, which then point to Cloudways. And once you've done that, you can come into the domain name management area and you can add records such as your A record, for example, um, that will be the IP address of your server um, and the TTL. For email, you can add the MX records and you probably also want CNAME records such as the WW version of your website. Um, and then TXT records are usually used to verify um, your website with services such as Google Search Console and similar options. So this makes DNS management super easy and I highly recommend using either the DNS management directly inside of Cloudways or as you can see here there's also a Cloudflare enterprise option available where I've made a previous video about that. That is also a really good option because it provides you all of the benefits of Cloudflare Enterprise at a cost of anywhere between three to five dollars per month. So you're getting a really good deal on some of Cloudflare's best technology. And when it comes to pricing, I will show you how to add a server here. You first select what application you want, you give it a name, and then you select where you want the server to be hosted. Do you want it to be by DigitalOcean, Amazon, or Google, for example? Google tends to be quite a bit more expensive. So if we look at one CPU here at Google, this costs $37. At DigitalOcean, if we go for one core CPU, this is $28. If you go for the lower RAM option, even just $14. So those are the kind of prices that you can consider. Then you can also switch between premium and standard. Premium is basically a more powerful CPU and server that you're getting. On the lowest end, you can um, start with just $11 per month. So I will also leave a link um, down below for 25 off for your first three months with Cloudways. So give them a try and let me know how you find them. So now let's review of how this actually works. How does Google determine which website should be at the top here when it comes for, to keywords such as the best dentist for anxious patients? So Google is essentially looking at a lot of different um, URLs that are ranking in the search results, and they are doing that most likely before the search is even done. What that means is they are indexing and storing a lot of the information that they can find, for example, on Reddit, um, on Yelp, Google Maps, um, and on your own website, so your regular on-page SEO content. They're storing all of that in a database um, in vector format. And then when you are asking, okay, what is the best dentist in San Francisco? Then they are looking um, inside of their database to see, oh, okay, on Yelp, there's an article that says top 10 best dentists and um, the young dentist was mentioned, let's say, on Yelp, right? So let's put young over here. Then Google also knows there's a Reddit thread about best dentists for anxiety in San Francisco. Young was not mentioned over here, so we put an X on Reddit. But Google also has an index of all of the Google reviews that were left and knows whether they contained the word young and, um, I mean, sorry, anxiety. 
And yes, there were about three reviews that I've checked that contained anxiety. Then Google knows, okay, Young's own website has anxiety on it as well. And um, then we also have, let's say, a LinkedIn article that also talks about recommending Young for anxiety. So he's essentially got um, one upvote from Google Maps. He's got one upvote from his own website, and he's also been mentioned on LinkedIn. And the idea is now that you really need to be omnipresent these days because the large language model will consider all of these in real time to find who's the most recommended dentist. And there will be different weights. Um, I would assume that Google Maps reviews containing those keywords should be um, one of the highest ranking factors, possibly along with um, things like Reddit mentions, right? That's a strong signal if you are mentioned at the very top in a Reddit thread with a lot of upvotes. That's quite similar to getting a lot of votes on Google Maps. Google Maps is a little bit less prone to be manipulated. So I assume Google will, in the future for local businesses, still be pulling quite a lot from the Google Maps signals. And this process that I've um, explained right now, which is basically Google going out, um, first discovering, um, then storing, and then retrieving information from all these different sources, um, that is somewhat similar to Google's regular search rankings, just that with the regular search rankings, there's a lot more factors such as backlinks considered. And we can see here in the SERPs, um, there's essentially no backlinks that are happening here. Um, the number one ranking clinic here right now has a DR of zero. So domain rating zero means essentially no backlinks at all pointing to this. This is the regular SERP. But then also Young Dental itself was not even ranking on the first page of Google at all. So you don't always need to be in the top spot to be considered for the um, basically the answers inside of AI overviews. As long as you're appearing sufficiently in other locations, uh, such as Yelp, Google Maps reviews, um, you've got the content on your own page and other sources that are recommending you, um, then most likely large language models will consider you. Um, the difference between this and let's say ChatGPT and also perplexity is that perplexity and ChatGPT, I would assume, don't build their own index. So because they are, they don't have that search engine background, they are doing a live search on the fly. That means they will also use the fan out technique um, and they will go to Google search results or Bing search results and find, okay, who's the top ranking dentist and try to extract content from their pages as well as go to the other pages such as Reddit, Yelp, and so on. Um, that will also happen with ChatGPT, but the difference is that the one happens on the fly in real time on ChatGPT and perplexity, whereas with Google search results, most likely these are not generated in real time because it would just be too many searches that Google needs to do at the same time. Um, and it's more cost effective for Google because they get so many queries to store this in a vector database and then retrieve it so that they don't need to constantly um, refresh the results. Let's say if I search, Google doesn't need to um, visit all these websites with their large language model, pull all the content, and then give me the answer. They already have that answer stored, if you will, um, in their vector database um, because they've already analyzed that content, whereas perplexity does not do that. They go out in real time to the search results and find who's ranking right now. Um, so that's a small difference. And in a future video, we will also look at the difference um, of ChatGPT answers and perplexity compared to Google's live mode. We will wrap up this video for the moment and I thank you for your attention and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you're looking for SEO consultant, I have a few spots available, so do check out the comment in the description below, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.